Remember the old days when stunts and effects were real and you didn't have to spend a whole movie pretending that the cartoon character next to Ian McClellan isn't in fact a green tennis ball on a stick? Well, if you go back even further, you'll find movies that were so real that they ranged from grossly irresponsible to outright murders. Five terrifying ways films used to achieve special effects. Number five. Action films once used real bullets. In today's film, shooting effects are usually achieved with blanks, tiny explosives called squibs, and if that's too much trouble, a dose of computer magic. In Hollywood's early years, they didn't have access to such fancy tools, so whenever gunfights occur in early movies, there's a good chance they're really shooting at each other. If you lived near a film set, we're guessing you stayed inside that day. They did have blanks back then, but that only lets you appear to fire the gun. To simulate a bullet hitting a wall, window, etc. next to an actor, well, they simply had a guy shoot it. If you needed some artillery fire for a war scene, same deal. All of the cannon fire in 1915's The Birth of a Nation is the real thing. The polytechnics to fake it hadn't been invented yet. Then you have the infamously insane director Cecil B. DeMille, who had blanks available to him but thought live ammunition looked more realistic. For the 1915 film The Captive, he wanted a scene wherein some soldiers shoot their way through a door with real bullets because it would look cool as hell. Then for the next scene, they were to rush inside and continue the shootout with blanks. Want to guess what happened? Yep, somebody forgot to swap out the real bullets and an actor got killed. Number four. For Bible epics, actors would fight actual lions. We mentioned DeMille. One of Hollywood's early famous producer-directors was responsible for a number of sweeping epics, including the Charlton Heston classic, The Ten Commandments, and a handful of other biblical movies. Well, when you're making Bible movies, it's understood that they are going to involve lions, as they were the animals responsible for devouring the most Christians. And clearly, only a real lion would do. The problem was they weren't big on fancy camera tricks that would keep the actors separated from an animal that presumably spent all of its time calculating the most effective way to eat its co-star. So here's a scene from DeMille's 1919 film, Male and Female. Later, DeMille's 1949 film, Samson and Delilah, stepped it up and required actor Victor Mature to fight a live lion. Quite reasonably, Mature refused to battle an apex predator for a film session of spirited make-believe, which resulted in the filmmakers having to simulate it using a combination of stunt double and stuffed lion for close-ups when Mature's face was visible. DeMille would later refer to Mature as the greatest coward ever born, which is a thing you can say when nobody has ever asked you to wear a ridiculous costume and fight a lion for a movie. Number three. Brutally killing horses was a standard filmmaking technique. If any modern films feature any kind of non-human life form, they almost always come with a disclaimer at the end from the American Humane Association guaranteeing that no animals were harmed during the making of this film. However, early Hollywood didn't care about animal safety, which should come as no surprise considering they barely cared about human safety, and no animal got it worse than the horses. For example, in 1939, two horses were deliberately killed on the set of the movie Jesse James when they were blindfolded and then forced to run off a 75-foot cliff into the ocean. But that's nothing. It's said over 100 horses died during the filming of Ben-Hur, the 1925 biblical epic. So how do you even kill that many horses? Mainly by treating them as disposable props. Consider the common stunt technique known as the running W. In short, this was used to make horses fall over on command, because it turns out that horses aren't very good actors. It entailed tethering a long wire to the horse's front legs and then making them run. When the horse reached a determined point, the slack ran out. 
the wire would pull tight and the horse would fall on its face, often killing it or breaking its legs. That's right, pretty much any time you see a horse fall over mid-stride in an old movie, there's a good chance you are watching it die. Number two. Early film makeup was toxic and potentially fatal. You might have heard the famous piece of Hollywood trivia about Buddy Ebsen, the original Tin Man from The Wizard of Oz, who had to be replaced after the silver paint on his body landed him in the hospital for two weeks. The filmmakers changed the recipe for the makeup in an attempt to not murder Ebsen's replacement, Jack Haley. But Haley nevertheless wound up with a severe eye infection. This, it turns out, was common. As recently as the middle of the 20th century, film makeup was made from a variety of toxic substances that could badly mess you up if you kept it slathered on your body for too long, because it occasionally takes humans an incredibly long time to start knowing things. Number one. The first stop motion animation was made with dead insects. Stop motion is a technique almost as old as film. Take a series of still photos of an object in various positions, string them together, and it looks like the object is moving. The pioneer of this form is generally accepted to be the Polish-Russian director Vladislav Starovich, who came up with the concept while trying to invent new ways to torture insects. Because that's what you do when you're a turn-of-the-century experimental filmmaker from Eastern Europe. Make sure to hit the like button don't forget to subscribe for more interesting facts videos on YouTube. Also, make sure you leave a comment saying I subscribed and I will reply back to every single one of you.